C'est moi. Thought you'd never show up. We're crowding call time. Get the piano going. This will be a shot one. I'll put it in code. Sensational? No. Some are pitch blend. Forty carloads. Head north? Yeah. But Germany. the chance to sign off. Pitch blend from Spain. 250 carloads into Germany in the past 30 days. And British intelligence says they've taken the whole output of monocyte from Norway. Our trouble is, we haven't enough people who can analyze scientific data. Pitch blend and monocyte. I'll be out of town till tomorrow night. I've got to talk to somebody who can analyze. <laughs> Why, Clem, how are you? <laughs> I don't know how I am. I've been wandering through cellars and breaking down doors, trying to get to you. Are you hiding something from me? No. <laughs> what are you hiding from me? I thought you were in the army. Just to put you in your place, I'm a colonel. Why the civilian clothes? I'm an OSS. Never heard of it. Well, that's fine. We're not supposed to get any publicity. It's the Office of Strategic Services. Around Washington, we're called the Cloak and Dagger Boys. Sounds romantic. Sure, very. We do a lot of things, Alva. Intelligence work, morale stuff, operations behind the enemy lines. Why are you telling me all this if it's so hush-hush? How's work in nuclear physics these days? So-so. Well, don't close up on me. Well, it's hush-hush, too, Clem. Government work. I know. You're working on the Manhattan Project. That's why I'm here.
What does this mean to you? Pitch blends for uranium, monazites for thorium. We're not working with thorium anymore. 235 has a more convenient atomic structure. Any chance the Germans have learned something about thorium we don't know? The Germans? I wouldn't think so. But quantities like these aren't for the laboratory. They're for large-scale operations. Do you think they might be working on an atomic bomb, too? We've all wondered. They've got the brains. They know as much about nuclear fission as we do. Well, Alva, they are working on an atom bomb. This is the first time I was ever sorry I'm a scientist. Why? Look. In a few years, maybe, we'll be able to break up the atomic structure of this apple. When we do that, it will become a bomb. The energy in this one little apple could pulverize this university, this whole town, its fine hospitals, its libraries, its wonderful medical schools, to say nothing of all the people in it. But we still wouldn't be able to make one little apple. We're running ahead of ourselves. Society isn't ready for atomic energy. I'm scared stiff. For the first time, thousands of allied scientists are working together to make what? A bomb! But who was willing to finance science before the war to wipe out tuberculosis? And when are we going to be given a billion dollars to wipe out cancer? I tell you, we could do it in one year. But if anybody's going to develop the atom bomb, he wants it to be us, not the Nazis. Not much choice in that. Alva, we need more trained men on this. We've got to know how far the Germans have gone, where they're working, how we can stop them. Most of our agents aren't equipped. They don't know what to look for. They're missing clues, I know. This is a race. It's the Germans or us. We've got to get more scientists into our outfit. How about what I'm doing here? I'm already authorized to take you off. You know the problem. You're single, you can speak a little German, but you've got to volunteer. There was a time when I thought I'd like to become some sort of a secret agent. But I gave it up at the age of eight. Okay, brother, you're now a spy. I've got two plane tickets back to Washington. Can I even have time to wind things up here? Ordinarily, we'd give you a few weeks. But I want you to take a look at this. Noah? Dr. Katerine Loder, one of the great ones. Used to be my scientific pinup girl before Hungary sold out to the Nazis. I suppose now she's right in the center of German atomic work. She's in Switzerland. Since when? About six weeks. She came over the Alps, alone. She's been in a hospital in Zurich with pneumonia. A few days ago, she got in touch with the American consulate. Said she wanted to see one of our scientists. You don't know how happy that makes me feel. <laughs> Say, if she's just out of Germany, she can tell us this is a terrific break. And if you'd stop feeling so happy about it and go home and pack a bag, you could see her in a couple of days. Okay.
Herr Wilson hat Zimmer 306. I hope you find your room satisfactory. Ich bin überzeugt davon. Dankeschön. Who do you want to see us at the Angel Hospital, room 168? She's there under the name of Mrs. Hickety. find out what you've done, they'll know you're not only a great physicist, but a great woman. Maybe your story isn't ended yet. What will people think? What will you think if I were to go back to Germany? Go back? But that isn't why you crossed the Alps or got in touch with us. No. But you see, I thought I'd be safe here. I'm not. The Germans have found me again. Yesterday, I got a letter from Postmark Zurich. And to go to Italy to work. I've been collaborating there with Polder. Giovanni Polder? Yes. If I don't return, beginning Sunday, ten anti-Nazi Hungarians are to be taken out of concentration camps and shot each day. And each day, they promised me a letter with names. With the photographs of the dead people. So the Germans are working on atomic weapons? Italians, too. They all coordinated. Then what would happen if you went back and your work helped them to succeed? And what happens if I stay here? I cannot live day by day knowing that innocent people are being shot because of me. I'll go back. Or I'll take poison. I can't decide any other way. Suppose you went back to work with Dr. Polda. You met difficulties in your work. 
obstacles. Understand? Yes. That's possible. That's possible. And if you felt strong enough for it, you could help us, too, with information. There are ways of communicating? I think so. I'll have to discuss it. Arrangements will have to be made. And... Believe me, I would be strong enough for that. But you have to hurry. They've given me only until Sunday. And before I go back, we have to talk. I'll need every bit of information you have. If you only knew how the British set them back when they bought that heavy water plant in Norway, it meant a delay of months for them. But what if you can't arrange this? Don't worry. It can be arranged. I will. Madame, vous êtes attendue dans la salle de radiographie. Oh, I forgot. They keep worrying over my lungs. I'm due for an X-ray. I'll be glad to wait. No. Come back tomorrow morning. I'll have more strength then. We can talk all day. Don't worry about anything. Alors, me voilà. Je suis prête. Tonight I'll sleep. It's such a good feeling to know you can sleep. Are there any calls for me? No, sir. I'm expecting a call. Will you please have me page at the bar? That too, sir. Ah! Oh, excuse me. Lassie, what's the matter with you? I'm terribly sorry. She's always getting caught under people's feet. That's a dog's privilege. <laughs> Martini. Yes, sir. Very dry, please. Now, this must be an American. By your clothes, the drink you ordered, surely an American. By the fact that you are new in this hotel, perhaps you are just over. Rose it. Tell me, oh, oh, pardon me. Tell me, friend, are we going to win? Our cause, I mean. Naturally, I'm anti-Nazi. The big question is American industry. For instance, can go to a 95 million tons, then we will win. So now tell me, how are things in America? Huh? Excuse me. Pardon me. Would you mind terribly if I sat down? Oh, I see. A Gestapo friend has been pumping you. He does that to everyone new around here. Thank you. My name is Andrew Wilson. Mine's Ann Dawson. You talk like an American. I am. You know, Fritz over there, he's not very dangerous, but he's a frightful bore. You better stay away from him. Mr. Wilson. Call for you, Mr. Wilson. Wilson speaking. Listen carefully. And don't say anything over this phone. You don't have to. Yes? Something must have got snafu. You run into a double play. Why did... The Tootsie you're sitting with is one of the slickest operators on the other side. Knock down that grog, but not too fast. And fade. Wait for me at home plate. Trouble? Nothing I can't handle. We're in a 
a jam. They found out about you. Somewhere along the line, you tipped them off. You made a mistake. I followed instructions to the letter. Then how did they kidnap Dr. Loder? What are you talking about? I just saw her this morning. Between the time you saw her and now, she disappeared from the hospital. She didn't walk out. She was kidnapped. I knew there was something up when I saw that Dawson woman with you. What have you been doing since the time you hit the airport? Give me every move. I came through the customs. What did you say? Told the Myers had watches. Nothing else? No. Go on. At the barrier, there was a photographer. I figured he didn't look like the real article, so I didn't let him snap my photo. That's it. That's your mistake. We've been keeping away from Loader. But when you didn't let him take your picture, they knew you had a reason. So they trailed you. That's how they knew you saw Loader. That's why they snatched her. That's why they put Dawson on you. And I thought I was being smart. How are you to know? You're new at this business. So they kidnapped her. But there's something we can do about it. Get the number of Dawson's room. I'm getting ideas. Meanwhile, let your acquaintance with this Dawson woman develop. Uh, will you tell me the number of Mrs. Dawson's room, please? Uh, thank you. No, you needn't call her. 221. 221. Don't bother, sir. I'll take them up Thank for you. you. drink before dinner? Thank you. I'll just get my wrap. Uh, never mind the wrap. We'll skip dinner this evening. Really? I have something I would like to read to you. Oh? Are you uh, writing me poetry? In a way, yes. This is a copy of a sonnet, which will be dropped off at the German consulate within a few minutes. It's written on bank stationery. It reads, Dear Sirs, I am only a clerk in this bank, but I am a true friend of Germany. You ought to know that a certain Anne Dawson, presumably friendly to us, has recently deposited with us the sum of 5,000 American dollars. Oh, that's ridiculous. She was accompanied to the bank by a tall American, whom I have never seen before. It was he who paid over the money. Signed? A watchful friend. But I... Uh, uh, there's a, a postscript. Mrs. Dawson and the tall American seemed very fond of each other. But I don't understand. What does all this mean? And why should the German consulate be interested in me? I'm in Switzerland because of my husband. He's in the Air Force. He was shot down and he's interned here. I'm an American. Technically, yes. You were born in America. You were raised there. But 
1935, you joined the German-American Bund under the name of Hilda Winters. In 1937, you were arrested for organizing anti-Semitic and anti-Negro riots. In 1939, you were in the Columbia House Berlin working for the Gestapo. Since 1940, you've been operating in Switzerland. Yes, you're an American, all right, but it makes my stomach crawl to have to admit it. You blind pig! Do you think the Gestapo will believe a clumsy frame-up like this? I think they will. We'll find out soon enough. It's now 7.28. I'll be getting a phone call at 7.30. If you haven't told me what I want to know by then, the letter will be delivered. <laughs> Why, they'll laugh at it. I rather think they'll do some checking. A woman who looks like you was in the bank with me today. Her signature was an exact duplicate of yours. Look. They must have been worried about you from time to time. They have a theory, once a German, always a German. It may apply to Americans, too. They know I wouldn't betray them. They know how loyal I've been. Until an American agent went to work on you, offered you money, and at the same time, rekindle that faint spark of patriotism deep down inside you. You know, if it ever gets out why they shot you, you may end up as a heroine. All I want to know is, where is Katrine Loder? If you tell me, the letter will be destroyed. at the Edelweiss Ski Club, up the mountain road, from the village of Moorhart. It's closed now. Everything in order. One guard in the library, the other upstairs asleep. Nurse asleep. Low doors, room door. Get started, Eric. Take your post when we go in.
that. In the whole world, there were perhaps 10 people with a mind equal to hers. Once to solve a problem, she invented a whole new system of mathematics. The work she still could have done. So you came to Switzerland for nothing? No. Did you say no? She told me she'd been working with an Italian, Giovanni Polda. The leading German scientists are all Nazi party members in good standing. I corresponded with Polda before the war. He was friendly then. How do you know he's friendly now? I don't. But the next step has to be Italy. Thirty seconds. It seems your Italian friends are right on time, Lieutenant. Good. Let's shove off, Al. Thank you, Captain. Good luck.
night, sir. Pronto? Sì. Appena. Siete in ritardo, che successe? Te lo dire dopo. Andiamo. I suppose you rent this truck from Mussolini. Sort of. The driver works for him by day and for us at night. <laughs> All right to smoke? Sure. Thanks. Grazie. Oh. Meet Gina. Gina, meet Herr Dr. Noheim of the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute in Berlin. We call him Al. Hello, Al. Hello. No, tre, porta male. Hey, la condena! Vado! Documenti, documenti. Kill the cigarettes. Su, su, presto che piove, presto, presto. Eccoli qui. Sta bene, andate. So ein Dreck könnte doch in Graben schmeißen. Die ganze italienische Armee ist voll so ein Mist. Ich habe auch ein paar Ecke, aber nicht der Primo, no? So was? Springe mit den Händen in der Luft herum. Schieb doch ein bisschen, schieb doch. Aiuto io. Fammi luce. Genau wie die italienische Armee. Alles ist ein großer Dreck. Ah, va, io ne ho visti più di uno rimanere in panna. Vai su e metti in moto. Grazie. Un'altra volta.
Dagli tutte le informazioni che hai su Polda. Conosce Polda? I don't talk Italian. Not even any? Oh, I know one verse from Dante. What kind of a mission do you make this time? You're not even dressed right for a German doctor. Oh, don't worry. I'll be a German doctor, all right. Does Polda know he's coming? We're going to surprise him. That's crazy. This is a very important mission, Gina. Larry, all of us have one job to do. That's to take Al safely in to see Dr. Polder and then take him out again. All right. Now, Polder always comes home from his laboratory for noon dinner. After that, he sleeps for one hour, then he works in his study. Does he have visitors in the afternoon? Well, in the 10 days I watch the house and get reports, only three visitors came. Who's in the house? A housekeeper, old woman, nice, stupid. A cook, good cook, fascist. And four secret police, over men. Two for day, two for night. And the chief of them is Luigi. Is it all checked? Checked from the cook when I got him drunk one night. Checked from Dr. Romoli, dentist of Polda, who's with us. Checked by Marsoli in his ways and checked by my eyes every day. Now you know what a first-rate courier can do. You're so good at this, I'll get you a job at it after the war. I don't like you to talk like that. I was only joking. I don't like your joking. I'm sorry. What do you know about that overman, Luigi? He's a smart man, well-trained. That's comforting. How do I get to the house itself? To get to the house has been arranged. But to get inside... Ich bin Dr. Nauheim vom Kaiser Wilhelm Institute in Berlin. Habe ich mit Professor Polis gesprochen? Da questa parte. Dr. Nauheim vom Kaiser Wilhelm Institute in Berlin. Habe ich dringend mit Professor Polis zu konferieren. Passaporto. Sprechen für Deutsch. Uh, pass, bitte. Luigi, il dottor Nauheim di Berlino non parla italiano. Dr. Nauheim? Habe mit Professor Polder zu konferieren. Hier sind meine Ausweispapiere. Kaiser Wilhelm Institute. Danke, Herr Doktor. Va bene. Bitte folgen Sie mir, Herr Doktor. Bitte nehmen Sie Platz. Herr Professor wird gleich hier sein. Danke. Bitte nehmen Sie Platz. Was kann ich für Sie tun, Dr. Nauheim? I'm not Dr. Nauheim. I'm an American physicist and my name is... I don't care what your name is. 
You are an American. Dr. Polder, listen. I don't want to listen. You're insane to come here. How dare you put me in such danger? A few years ago, you wrote me a letter. At the end of it, you said, only a free science in the service of all humanity can be a good science. Who are you? Elva Jesper. Fletcher! Why is not? Miss Cozy, volevo solo dei fiammiferi. Grazie. Can't betray a fellow scientist. But you must be insane to come here. We have nothing to talk over. Nothing. Please go. Dr. Polder, you're working on nuclear fission. Be sensible. Go. You're working for the Nazis. I know that. But I can't believe you're doing it willingly. Willingly, unwillingly, what does it matter? You have no right to jeopardize me by coming here. I have the right. Katrine Loder gave me the right. You saw Katrine? I spoke with her just before the Nazis killed her. Katrine dead. Catherine dead. Murdered. She died because she wouldn't let criminals use her science. But you're letting them use you, Paul. So what do you want? That they should murder me too? No. But I want information. And I want my life. Is this the Giovanni Polder who resigned from the Royal Academy rather than shake hands with Mussolini? All right. I've become a weakling. Despise me. I don't care about people. I care about myself. Only myself. You're lying. That's not the great Polder talking. What are you afraid of? What hold do they have on you? Hold? No hold. I'm free as air. All they have is the only person in the world I care about. My daughter, Maria. They have her. His masters and mine. I keep his portrait here so others will think I'm patriotic and so I can have something to hate. Not since the beginning of time. Has there been a man who has a hatred like me? Then fight them. <laughs> they have my daughter. They let her send me a postcard once a week. And I let them pick my brains. Once a week, I cry. <clears throat> the other night, I drink. Well, now they threaten to take her into Germany. I said something they didn't like. Only a little thing. I forgot myself. Don't you know they can take you into Germany, too? They're being pushed back here. Do you think they'll leave you if they retreat? No. They won't leave me. Not till I'm squeezed dry. But still, you'll serve them. They have Maria. For her, I'll serve anyone. Suppose she were safe in another country. But it can be done. Where is she? She's permitted to live under guard in a hotel in Perugia. 
the albergo Excelsior. Oh, let her be in England, America. Give me one letter in her handwriting, and I We will... can do better than that. We can take you out, too. You are not playing with an old sick man? No. It will be dangerous for her, won't it? It can be arranged safely. You can trust me. Trust you? No. I've lived too long and the fascists might trust no one. But a business bargain I make. If you help me, I'll help you. Until then, don't think I'm a fool. I'll tell you nothing. If those are your conditions, Dr. Polda. Yes. Do it. And maybe I'll become the old Paul Dakin. A free science in the service of humanity can be the only good science. Come now. I'll better take you past my watchdogs. Dr. Nauheim, bitte grüßen wir alle Herren vom Kaiser. Ich werde alle Berichte so schnell wie möglich hier vielleicht sogar nächste Woche in die Nacht schauen. Gut, es war mir eine große Ehre, Sie kennenzulernen. Auf Wiedersehen, Herr Professor. Auf Wiedersehen, Dr. Nauheim. Giuseppe. Auf Wiedersehen. Getting Paula's daughter won't be any cinch. How do we go about it? He and I will go about it. You stay put. I might be able... You might be able to land us in the soup, that's all. How long do you think you can wander around Italy without running into the Gestapo or the Obra? You think they won't check your papers with Berlin? No, sir. You stay put or the deal is off. Okay. Where can I stay? Do you have any food stamps? Yes. Then this is the best place. Just keep out of sight and wait. If, if we get Paul's daughter, I'll put a notice in the papers announcing the death and action of Lieutenant, Lieutenant Rinaldo Amadi. Amadi? Mm-hmm. A-M-A-D-I. Amadi. When you see it, go to Romilly's. Paul is dentist. He'll have the professor there for you. There are partisan airfields in the north. We'll go out by plane. You know the vineyard, Punados? Yes. Take Paul to there. How long are you likely to be? As long as it takes. A week, maybe. What if you don't get Maria? What if we don't hear from you at all? The fortunes of war, Al. You'll be on your own then. Is your coat, Al? Thank you. Grazie. Is it just a like new? Marsoli. Andiamo. Good luck. Gina, will you look outside, please? Shh. <laughs> 
Make yourself at home. Thanks. Guess having me here on your hands was a little more than you bargained for. In our work, we take what comes. Please stop looking me over. You're nice to look at. Just like a scene in the opera we are. The people go, the young couple is left alone. Quick, the young men must make compliments. It's expected. Only there isn't any music. And you are not a tenor. Have it your own way. But don't add me up before you know me. Are we going to have to listen to that all night? Maybe you ask the cat. <laughs> Full of vinegar, aren't you? Sounds hungry. Well, if people are hungry, it's only natural cats should be. Have you got any milk for it? Milk? Oh, I remember. Comes from cows, no? Good for babies. Still, I hate to hear a cat cry. Maybe a piece of bread. The American likes cats, hmm? Only you're in Europe now. Here you find cats in butcher shops. This one's been lucky. But by tomorrow, maybe, plop into somebody's stew pot. Must be nice to live in a country where not only cats are fed, but children. Please, I'm going to put on my nightgown. How does a girl like you get used to this kind of life? Do you think anyone gets used to it? I think you do wonderfully, Gina. I never knew a girl with so much courage. Courage? You're a grown-up man and know so little. Know nothing about cats and nothing about people. What's the matter with you, Gina? Oh, no matter. Except you come from the moon. And here we live like... Like Lazarus, we lie in the grave, waiting for the Savior to come. Only I don't come from the moon. And Italians like you aren't just lying down. You're too long for the couch, you take the bed. Mm -mm. Listen, in this work, we're comrades. No. Okay, tomorrow you'll have a broken back. I hope. <laughs> Thanks. cat anymore. In this country, even the cats learn it's no use to cry. She has fleas. Excuse me, I have no liver with onions. Only leftovers. Now you shut up and let me sleep or I throw you right out the window. Go 
Good night. Good night. You frighten me like this. You were dreaming. You were crying in your sleep. Oh, yes. Oh, I remember. It might help to tell me about it. <laughs> You've been fighting in the foxholes a long time, Gina. Tonight. to myself. Now maybe, maybe for, for a whole week, it'll be easy. Stay in the room. Sing a little. Dust. Wash dishes. Not even. Not even in sleep. Signorina, hai visto il mio gatto? Sì, aspetti un momento, è qui da me. È scared, you want to scared somebody? Qui. L'ho fatto entrare in camera perché mi agolava e non mi lasciava dormire. Perché non lo tiene giù? Oh, ecco. Grazie, signorina, grazie. Il piccolo diavolo sembra che se ne scappa via, sa. E come... Vieni, ecco, vedi, vedi qui, birbarbarte che sei. Chi è questo uomo? Il signore, il signore è mio marito. Ci siamo sposati ieri. No, non parlo italiano, è tedesco. Oh, congratulazioni, signori, congratulazioni. Questa è una grande occasione, buona fortuna, signora. Ma suo marito è registrato con la polizia? Oh, sì. Ah, oh, allora tutto va bene, tutto va bene. Beh, adesso mi scusi, eh? Beh, vi auguro una vita lunga, con prosperità, felicità e sempre pace. Buona fortuna, signori, buona fortuna, signori. Arrivederci. Brava, bravissima. The cat. It had to be the cat. It's always the little things, the things we can't plan, that make us end up in the hands of the police. I can't stay here any longer. Why? Is he an agent? No, but every janitor has to report any new person in the house. I told him, you're my husband. Why did you do that? I, I can't register with the police. We can't risk that. I know. I made a mistake. You know of any other safe house? Trying to think. Well, we can't walk the streets day and night. We'd be picked up sure. I know. Shut up for a minute and let me think. We're finished here. It's not your fault. 
I didn't have to tell him you're my husband. In our work, there's no room for that sort of pride. Without pride, you wouldn't be Gina. Don't be ashamed of your pride. Last night and now, you say things that, that make me feel easier in here. Maybe you feel charity. Or maybe you like people. Mostly I like cats. When was this picture taken, Gina? Just before the war. A hundred years ago. Two rooms and a bath for three days. A bath? Who's giving us all that? A schoolmistress I once knew, a fascist party member. I told her I had a German friend who was very important, and she was very proud of me. <laughs> Tired, Gina? Not bad. Hungry? Mmm. Why? There's a lot of energy in an apple. Mmm. Watch that. Oh, I was trying to keep busy waiting for you. <laughs> but what is it? It's called plotting the line into a little bit of a sine wave. Oh, it's not as difficult as it sounds. <laughs> I was imagining I was riding one of those horses, trying to figure out how far I would go all together, going around and up and down at the same time. Horses going up and down. <laughs> and kids, music. Ever come here, Gina? Mm-hmm. Before the war. The music played Giovinezza all the time. A fascist song. It spoiled it for me. Come here with a boy? Yeah. One you like? He's in the picture with me. He played the cello. Where is he now? Somewhere. Without his cello. Maybe after the war I might come back. And I'd bring you here. But the music would be different. After the war, a lot would. But you won't come back. I might. Why not? It's time now. We can go. I teach my little children in school. Wednesday, I play chamber music. I'm very innocent. And I'm easy to blush. Change of clothes does all that. Well, we'll see. I'm still pretty. No? 
Mm. A little bit. Well, even if you don't think so. All the over men I meet, they tell me I'm pretty. I know a man. He is long and tall. He moves his body like a cannonball. Fare thee well, my honey. Fare thee well. What's that? An American cowboy song. Gee da dum. Well, don't look so funny. One of your shot down flyers from New Arizona taught it to me. New Mexico. New Arizona. Okay. New Arizona. He taught it to me. The rest I never learned. Only the first lines. He was nice. <sighs> How do I look? Pre-war. Do you mean it? Of course I do. I'm no over man. Why do you say that? You brought it up. Oh, you're jealous, I suppose. Hmm? Do you think I couldn't be jealous? Do you want me to dance? Hmm? Maybe I am jealous, Gina. Don't make love to me. Don't be somebody I like. If you feel like kissing me and I feel like kissing you, so we kiss. But don't be serious. In my job, I kiss without feeling. Last week, an Obra man with a silly moustache. Next week, a fat Gestapo pig. <laughs> Gina, girl, why do you keep whipping yourself, Gina? You think, you think it's good to be a courier in the underground? You think it's exciting, heroic? No, if you fight scum, you become scum, that's all. No, I know what you are. Not so far from that little girl in the picture. Go to the door. Buonasera, signore. Buonasera. Por fa la carità per i bambini dell'asilo. E per gli orfani di guerra, signore. Un momento. Grazie che Dio la benedica. Dio la benedica. Who was it? Hmm? Oh, two sisters collecting charity for children orphaned by the war. Anything wrong with that? Oh, wait. We've got to get out of here. They're not real sisters. How do you know? They're stopping at an automobile parked on the corner. We're being watched. Come on. Let me see. No, no, stay away from that window. Now, wait a minute. I follow my feelings. I feel scared inside, and I'm responsible for you. Trust my feelings. Listen, let's not get too jumpy about this. If they're from the police, we'd be arrested already. Well, I know there's something wrong. I have more experience than you have. We must get out of here, and quick. All right, Gina. Have it your way. Here we'll be safe for the night.
think this is safe. And tomorrow, soon as it gets light, we'll move. All right. Watched. We got out awfully easy. I trust my feelings. I'm shaking. I'm shaking all over. Now you'll go to pieces, Gina. Every day you fall apart a little more. Too long. Too much. Too much worry and too much fright. Much death. Gina, you're going to be all right. Don't worry. I want you to like me. I want you to be jealous of me. I want you to think I'm a girl in a white dress who's never been kissed before. Advertisement. Where? Here. Lieutenant Rinaldo Amadi. They've got Polda's daughter out. Now we must go to Romilly's. Nightmare's over, baby. And another one starts to get Polda out. We'll manage. Did you get me a razor? Yes. Razor. And a blade. And a piece of soap. Thanks. You're welcome. Well, in our work you meet a man or a woman for a day or a week, then goodbye. But in one day, hearts come close. Maybe in peacetime, I, I don't even look at you. Say, silly American tourist. Now I tell you, I like very much this long American. I want you to know. Why only like, Gina? It's better, easier. Why? Sometimes it's better. Ouch! You must shave. And hurry. We've got to go to Romilly's.
Get into that doorway. It's just like killing a mad dog. Except for the dog, you can feel sorry. It's not his fault he's sick. serious. Just a little too much excitement at my age. I'll be again all right as soon as I've seen Maria. All right. Stop around the bend. First time I heard your name.
Jasper. I like it. Pinky at your service. Pink, come on in, folks. It's okay, it's Pinky. Hi, Al. Pinky, meet Professor Polder. How do you do, Professor Polder? How do you do? Where'd you get that stuff? Oh, this? My traveling costume. <laughs> kind of a nice fit, isn't it? Oh, meet Punaro. Great old guy. If he were in uniform, he'd have a chest full of fruit salad. Pionaro, i nostri amici. Benvenuti. Si accomodino. Let's go in. And uh, this is Pietro. Buonasera, Pietro. Ben arrivati. Where's Marcelli? Oh, he'll be along any minute. And with Signorina Polda. Is she safe? Perfectly safe. And very happy she's going to see you again. Run into any trouble? Not a hitch in the whole operation. Went like a breeze. We worked it through a little girl in the hotel. Nice kid. A little scared at first, but I... I appeal to a better nature. Yes. Our Perugian friends fixed up some papers that made it okay to travel by train. Thank you. This afternoon, we got off at the nearest town. I figured the others would make it easier here after dark, so I came on ahead and checked on our reservations for the trip out. Oponato. Where do we meet the plane? In a field about four miles from here. Grazie. Gina knows where. Can we go all the way by car? Almost. Won't take long. Ci chiamano. It's from Corsica. The plane will land at 4 a.m. What sort of plane will they send? Big. They know there are four of us going out. I know I should be wishing they'd come quickly and it'll all be over. But all I can think of is in one hour we'll say goodbye. Gina, there's room on the plane. There's so few of us here, even one who runs away is badly missed. You know that, don't you? Yes, I know that. Signorina Polla. Aspetti. Sì. Addio, Antonio. Ora vedrà suo padre. Grazie. Non vedo l'ora. Benvenuti. Entrate. Come va, Pinky? Bene, bene. Signori e signori, la signorina Polla. Not Maria? What? That is not Maria! Where is she? Where is my daughter? In the Perugia Cemetery. She died six months ago. No. No, that's impossible. She's been writing me steadily. The handwriting is so hard to imitate. The 
Kaminski! Ergeben Sie sich! Das ganze Haus ist umstellt! Kommen Sie durch die Vordertüre heraus, einer nach dem anderen! It is no use. You're surrounded by Germans. Throw away your guns and march out with your hands up. Surrender. It's your only chance. Take their time about it. They can afford to. Probably have a whole crowd regiment out there by daylight. Well, sometimes one guy carries the ball, sometimes another. There's a way out of here through the cellar. Grab the old man and Gene and beat it. I can't do it, Pinky. Don't go soft on me. Now there isn't time. It'll be lightning now, and that plane can't wait. Try it together. Because the only way you can make it is if we do enough shooting, you'll convince them we're all still here. Now get going. No, Pinky. My orders were to get you into this country and get you out of it. For the love of heaven, don't get soft to me now at a time like this. Gina, get him out through the tap door. That's an order for you too, Al.
to give them five more minutes. Aspetti dieci minuti, stanno per arrivare. There they come. Change. I'm coming back for you, Gina. Who knows? Would you want me to? If you don't, say so. Say it now. Want? What? More than living. Come back. Come back for me. Thank you. 